Um, and as always, you've had enough of me by now already, seven slides in. So uh, tonight's keynote speaker, look at that. Uh, is Virginia Pierce. Um, she's been a great supporter of Uden from the beginning and continues to be so, attending almost every meeting that we've had so far, which is fantastic, offering ideas and suggestions, um, and for which we're very grateful. Before taking her present role with the Film Commission, Virginia worked at the Sundance Institute and also Spy Hop, and she's very well connected with the digital entertainment in the state. So please welcome Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> um. So it's great to be here, thank you. And again, thanks to John for getting this going. We've talked about it for months, so it was great to see it actually started and continuing every month. Um, Utah has a long history in film, as I'm sure many of you know. So before I really jump into the presentation, I thought we'd just remind everyone of some of the things that have been shot here. So yeah, since the 20s, over 900 films have been shot here. Got its start with the John Ford Westerns down in southern Utah, and we've really seen the growth of film since then. And I, I especially think that the growth of film culture has been strong. Sundance has been here for 30 years. We have organizations like Spy Hop and Utah Film Center and Salt Lake Film Society and just organizations contributing to the, the film culture in Utah. Um, and Part of what I love about it is that I talk to filmmakers that are very surprised by what we have in Utah. I think one of my favorite and weirdest experiences all the years that I worked at Sundance was driving John Waters around. You guys know who John Waters is? And he really wanted Taco Bell. And he was like, you guys don't have a Taco Bell in Utah, do you? I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So we went to the, I went to the drive-in Taco Bell with John Waters, and he was like, it blew his mind that Utah had a Taco Bell. And I was like, gosh, we had a lot. We had a lot more than Taco Bell. <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, our part of our mission is to market the, the state of Utah for film production. So we're marketing the state of Utah as a filming destination. We're promoting Utah crew support services, so where you get your gear, location services, how are you, you know, who are you hiring, the rigging, the gaffing, all that stuff. And sustaining growing Utah film and digital entertainment industries and educational sectors. So really working as the center of this big circle of organization institutions that are all working in these industries. And that's really my goal is to, to help everyone connect where it makes sense. Um, we also have an incentives program. 
Utah's Motion Picture Incentive Program offers a 20 to 25 percent tax credit. That is a post-performance tax credit that's offered to any production that shoots, spends over $200,000 in the state of Utah. So it's Utah spend. We only give money back on Utah workers. It's everything that's spent in Utah, basically everything that could be taxed, we give you up to 25 percent of a tax credit back on. So. Those of you who know the film industry or maybe that don't, this is the number one driving force of the film industry today. If you get beyond a, a small independent film and that is the only reason that people go, well, I won't say that. It is one of the major reasons people go to a location to shoot. Um, you know, the, there's the three C's, they call them. It's cost, creativity, and convenience. So creativity is the location, what they're looking for. Is it, you know, is it convenient to get all of their crew there? Can they, can they make it work? Do they have all the resources that they need? And then cost. How much money can I get back on what I've spent? Um, this has grown over the past 10 years. There, there wasn't incentives before about 2000, maybe. Is that about when it? 2004, no, just in general, in, throughout the country, about 2002. In Utah, we've had incentives since 2004. Our current program was launched in 2011. And um, the, it's an ongoing appropriation of almost $7 million they're given to incentivize film productions to come here. Give you an example. So, so we spend about $6.79 million a year. And the big states, Louisiana, Georgia, Louisiana, uh, California, New York, all are spending in the hundreds of millions of dollars per year. So you know, on the scale, we are definitely on the lower end. However, since the program was created in 2011, $195 million has been spent in the state by studios like Fox Searchlight, Disney, The Weinstein Company, ABC Network, with some of the films that you saw in the video and, and on the slide. Utah spent, over that time, about $23 million in incentives. So, you know, when you do that math, it's, it's definitely worth it for them to come here. And also, over 27% of that money was spent in rural areas, which for Utah is great. You know, Moab and Kanab and all of these places that are, are really the look that they're looking for. Um, so, that brings me to the next slide. Does anyone know what this is? Blood and Oil. This is our newest production shooting in here. They start shooting on Friday. Um, this is an ABC primetime network show. They shot the pilot in March, and they approved the 12 more episodes that they're starting to shoot on Friday. They're based at the Park City Film Studio, and they're going to be spending about $33 million in the state in the next six months. So this was our largest incentive that we've given in the state. It was almost $8 million to ABC. It's based on that you know, 25%. You, you spend money in Utah, you get money back. Again, it's post-performance, so that won't you know, they won't see that money until after this is all said and done. They've shot all those 12 episodes. Um, this is part, ABC is a part of the Disney network. Disney's been a great partner. They've shot Lone Ranger, John Carter, all of the Disney Channel movies that have been shot here. I think 33 of them have been shot in Utah. I think total they've done 100. So a third of the movies they've shot have shot in Utah. So they've been a phenomenal partner. Um, and really, incentives help support our industry here. So in 2014, the, the program created 1,700 crew jobs and promoted about $23 million in economic impact. So every year, we are looking at about 30 projects that we're given incentives to, from smaller local productions to larger things like ABC. That was the crew from Blood and Oil at the pilot last, last March. Um, film also creates a component of a strong component of a strong economy that's adding to our reputation. So the incentive program creates an environment for other facets of the industry to come here. This is a, a Land Rover shot that was done, a commercial that was done earlier this year. About 65 major commercials shot in Utah in the last couple of years, and they they choose it obviously for its location. But they wouldn't come here without the professional crews and the resources that we have. We don't give incentives to commercials, so this is sort of a byproduct of the incentive program. This is a great story for us to tell to the legislators about, you know, here is how the money's getting us extra bang for our buck. Um, they are spending between 10 and 15 million a year in commercials here, so it's a great industry driver for us. Clients and partners. 
There we go. So these are some examples of our kind of key clients in state and out of state, people that we work with on an ongoing, brand, on ongoing basis, um, some of the studios that come here a lot, as well as some of the, the um, partners that do a lot of the work for them while they're here. Aerostorm Entertainment is a local production company that does a movie a year, at least, through the incentive program. And then these are some of our partners. So on you know, the Motion Picture Association of Utah, does anyone know or as a member of that organization? A couple of you, one of you. <laughs> um, that is an industry group that really was started to, similarly to this, to create a networking opportunity and a, a help a place to get resources and help each other in the film industry. It has since become a lobbying arm of the industry. So they spend a lot of time with legislators talking about money that we need for the, for the program. The Film Society, Sundance Institute, obviously, and the Film Center, and then obviously our educational partners. And what I love about the education system is for a state our size to have the amount of award-winning educational institutions that are teaching not only film but digital entertainment of all kinds is, is really unusual. And I think um, one of my goals is to expand the focus of the Film Commission beyond just film into digital entertainment, and that's kind of where John and I started this conversation. Um, you can't talk about film without talking about digital, so it's really not an option. Um, according to data from the EDC Utah, the digital entertainment industry in Utah employs more than 1,700 people and accounts for more than $400 million in revenue. So we're kind of trying to figure out, you know, how, what's the best way to help that industry? Do they need help? How can we work together? And helping us bridge that divide is John and Uden and also our partners at GoEd, which is the Governor's Office of Economic Development. The Film Commission sits within GoEd, but there are a lot of programs within that umbrella. And we're really looking at new ways to incorporate technology and innovation that's sort of already inherent in Utah into our strategic plan. So, on that note, um, we have another video. I'm the film commissioner. I show videos. Our promise to candidates looking for opportunity is that if you want to do cutting edge technology work and you want to pursue your passion for outdoors, there is no better place in the world that I know of. I actually started looking at Utah because one of my coworkers at Google told me that there was an up-and-coming tech scene here. And when they first told me that, I didn't really believe it, but I Googled it. It took me five minutes to figure out that there were plenty of companies here to work for. I think there is a thriving tech scene here in Utah. There's a lot of things that make Utah a good place to live. One is the cost of living is a lot lower than in places like San Francisco or New York, but you still have that strong tech community, that strong tech vibe. And when you combine that with all the outdoors activities that a lot of our employees enjoy doing, there's always something to do in Utah. One of our core value is balancing your passion and performance. We feel if people are enjoy the outdoors, they are into some activities, they're generally competitive, and we don't have to babysit them. We have a bustling startup scene here. So when you find yourself at a company like this, it's kind of a once in a lifetime experience, and you're gonna stay, and you're gonna give it your all. You know, I think that over the next five, ten years, you're going to see some amazingly strong companies emerge here within the state. My guess would be, well, you'll probably see a half a dozen companies IPO within the next few years. We just need more smart people to discover Utah and make it their home. I always say to people, it's Utah is a hidden gem. So to talk more about that video, I am going to turn the time over to Thomas Wadsworth, who's a, been a partner of mine at GoEd, and he can kind of explain what he's trying to do, and then we can talk a little bit more about that. So as Virginia said, I'm Thomas Wadsworth, and I work um, inside the Governor's Office of uh, Economic Development, and I run a program um, called the Technology Commercialization and Innovation Program. Um, like that video showed, we have a lot of tech companies here and um, that's because um, Utah is kind of known for this culture of entrepreneurial or an entrepreneurial culture um, also we kind of are known for this um, 
culture of innovation that we have here as well. And the governor and the legislature are um, interested in an extremely um, willing to make sure that uh, the state continues to to be a hotbed for um, innovation and entrepreneur and for entrepreneurs to start companies so the tools that they've given um, our offices is this program here and what it is is it's a grant program for um, startups for small businesses and for university teams um, to receive non-dilutive funding for their innovative projects that they're coming up with. So the program was started in 2011. Um, at that point in time, it was only focused on commercializing or taking to market um, technology that was developed at universities. But um, in 2014, they expanded it to small businesses to help um, a lot of the entrepreneurs here in the state. So um, grants uh, that we give out can be up to um, $100,000, but they've been as little as uh, $40,000 as well. Um, we try to have multiple funding rounds each year. Um, this year we're planning on two funding rounds and the application uh, for the funding round uh, that's coming up will open up here in the first week of August. So you can look at our website for that if um, you have a project that um, would fall into uh, some of these categories. Things we look for are strong business plans, uh, potential economic uh, development here in the state, job creation, um, are you going to be able to raise money, are you going to be able to be a profitable tax payment entity here in the state for a long time to come and if you are we'd love to um, help you get on your feet there so um, we also have a lot of outside outside resources available as well so a lot of you in this room may be um, extremely tech savvy and um, have a product that you're working on developing but you don't have a lot of business expertise uh, this last year we um, contracted with a local um, accelerator that um, anybody who receives the grant can go to this accelerator for free and they walk you through how to make a business plan they walk you through how to um, get your startup going how to find partners they have an extensive network of mentors that can help you people who have gone through this before and so um, along with the money this program also provides um, mentorship and, and other resources that um, then can't be found anywhere else so um, I'm going to be around um, if anyone has any questions afterwards or I don't know if we're having question and answer but um, we'll let Virginia uh, go from there we'll, we'll tab team this next okay. one so um, over the last few months, we have been working on a strategic plan to really advance specific goals around digital entertainment. Um, Tom and Michael Malley and Ricky and I and a couple other people at GoEd sat down and we really said, you know, this is a question I like to ask and it sort of came out from SpyHop. Actually, I have lots to thank from SpyHop. But, you know, if you look down the road, what does it look like if you're winning at this, whatever you're doing? You know, what does that look like? And some of the things that we talked about, um, is a workforce development pathway that works, more students in the field who stay in Utah after graduation, and successful digital entertainment projects coming out of Utah. So while Thomas's program doesn't specifically focus on digital entertainment, that is a growing sector that he and I talked about really wanting to encourage people to, to think of technology that includes digital media and digital entertainment, because there are resources out there that have gone, maybe, you know, people think, oh, it's biotech, or it's, you know, what are some of the more traditional software, software development that maybe is isn't in the entertainment sector. And so some of the things that we are working on that, that are going to happen this year is a sort of an assessment of film and digital entertainment industries and to, to kind of create a forecast for what that could look like in Utah. And we're working with the Policy Institute at the University of Utah. It's the Bieber study, for those of you who follow economic policy. Um, they have an amazing website, actually. They have studied almost everything in Utah, and you can learn a lot. <laughs> so they have amazing people on their team and have lots of resources. We're going to work with them on a study, and I've talked to John about helping me out with that study. Or if I haven't, I'm, I'm asking you now. John's going to be on that committee with me. Um, unity and thought process around incubator spaces and innovation hubs. How many of you in the last two months have heard the words incubator spaces or innovation hubs? Let's just all go ahead and admit it. Those are the buzzwords right now. Um, there's a lot of people talking about 
you know, oh, so and so is thinking about opening one in Draper, and they're going to do this, and so and so in Provo, and you know, South Salt Lake's looking at one, and, and there's a lot of very cool ideas out there, and we would like to help, sort of, on the governor state level, look at what everyone is doing and try to say, you know, can we help facilitate? Can you? What do you need? And who's doing what? And can we all agree that we'll keep each other in the loop about what's happening? Because that can be a great asset, is just a map of what those spaces are where they are and what they're focusing on. Um, and then we're, we're really working on holding a digital entertainment summit at the Sundance Film Festival. Sundance has been a great partner for us. They have some amazing new technology exhibitions and artists that come through there. And I think that is going to be a great time for us to pick the brains of the people that are doing this really well in other states. I know John's talked about the Made in New York guys. There's some really exciting things happening in Austin. Vancouver, obviously, you know, Canada has is really winning at this game, mostly because they have lots more government funding than we do. But um, there's a lot of great examples of where this is happening well. And so I think we're going to do some research and development this year about what that looks like and how we could take some of those ideas and, and make them work here. And I think, you know, Utah is just is poised to thrive in these areas. While many states of our size lack the infrastructure, as we've talked about, Utah really does have it all. And we have an innovative culture, a business-friendly culture, and award-winning educational institutions. So really, we have all of the things that we need, and now it's just taking those resources and, and taking the next step. Anything else? No, I think you hit it all. Q&A. Anyone have questions or answers? I would love some answers. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet, <laughs> but I will keep you posted. I mean, I think mostly I am I'm interested in getting some smart people in the room, and but before we do that, I want to have the questions ready that we want answered, and and so that we can come out of it with a real game plan. Yeah. Um, for me, I think it's, you know, where, what are we lacking? What is it, you know, I know we've talked about this in these meetings before, but is it, do we need more post-production, more visual effects? Is it resources for startups? Is it finishing funds? Is it more, you know, post-graduate resources? Where are we missing the boat when it comes to just winning at this game and and also what does winning look like you know I for me it is workforce there's a lot of on the film side we struggle with kids are graduating and I, I think on the digital entertainment side too they're graduating and they're not finding the jobs they want or they're not working in the field that they want they don't quite have the skills to jump in and start from ground zero so how do we bridge that gap is a big one for me and there are a couple programs around the country that are doing really well this New Mexico film office is one of them they have an incredible training program both for kids coming in college and postgraduate so that's another program that we're gonna be looking at what about you what are, what are you um, I, what I would say is when you look at Utah um, in the tech space right now and and Vatsla call who just walked in from our office can speak to this <laughs> a little bit better than than I can but um, in the tech space we are known for data analytics and so if you're a new data analytics company you're going to come here because anyone who does data analytics is here in the state. Um, when we look at what's coming on the horizon and trends, um, I think we see a lot of stuff coming with digital entertainment, virtual reality, and things like that. And how can we position ourselves as a state to be a hotbed um, for those type of industries uh, going forward? I think some of the interesting partnerships we've looked at is, you know, Disney's been a great partner in traditional film. They are doing some very interesting things in, in con new content creation. They've got Maker Studios, Disney Accelerators. They're looking at YouTube very closely. I think that's a realm where we have some potential to say, hey, we've got lots of young people here. We have some pretty significant YouTube stars. What do we need to incorporate the, you know, a startup or a hub for online content creators. What does that space look like? How do you monetize that? You know, how can we help? Yeah. So uh, our office funds a bunch of um, locations across the state called uh, BRCs, Business Resource Centers. 
Um, it's a public service, so anyone can walk into one of these business resource centers, and it's designed to be a quote-unquote one-stop shop for a small business. So if you need um, any type of help, they have consultants in there that can um, introduce you to the right people, that can help you um, craft your business or, or really address whatever needs you have personally. And um, we have a couple here in Salt Lake and then a bunch uh, throughout Southern and Northern Utah as well. And Avenue H. And we have Avenue H. Hopefully you've seen the commercials about it, but um, it's the uh, small business marketplace for uh, health insurance. So um, I believe that's under 50 employees, but um, if you're looking to um, take advantage of that, that's a great um, program we have that's run out of our office as well. And as far as film goes, you know, we do, our incentive program is for production spending over 200000 but for commercials and for lower budget filmmakers, we do a ton of services in our office that includes locations help, we do permitting, um, help with, per, you know, connecting you to the right people to get permits for where you want to shoot, um, just resources. We have a, a great directory of all of the production services and crew on our database, but we, the database can be overwhelming, I will say, if you've ever looked at it. So the best thing is to call our office. We have some extremely knowledgeable producer services reps that really know exactly, I mean, they have scouted every square mile of Utah. And if you, we get, lo we get location requests almost every day through our website. You know, I'm looking to shoot an old warehouse in an abandoned field with a lake. And, and Mimi and Derek will be like, oh yeah, I know that place, this is where it is. Like, it's amazing. They pull that information out of the recesses of their mind. So definitely use, don't be afraid to call the film commission if you have film questions. We get a lot of students that call the ones that know that we exist, that is. Yeah. Are there incentives for animations that are being made here? So animations are included in as a as a film for so it's just if you're shooting or spending over two hundred thousand dollars, you're eligible to apply. And we have we do have a digital media part of our statute. Um, I might bring Ricky up here to talk about that actually. He's a dear you can you rattle those off? You're more familiar. And the reason I will tell you that I am not very familiar with this is since two thousand eleven with this when this statute was approved, not one company has taken advantage of it. It's not the right incentive, which is why we're working on it, but I will have Ricky explain it to you. Um hopefully I can explain it. <laughs> I know. Um so so as Virginia as Virginia said earlier in, in the presentation, the way the the all, all Utah film incentives, including business incentives, are, are post-performance. But they, but the difference between the film incentive, the the one that uh, that we use for motion pictures, television shows, and things like that, is on the spend in the state. So when a production company comes in, they'll spend a certain amount in the state, and they'll receive a a tax credit on that spend. On the digital media component, uh, that works for uh, you know if if it was put into action, it would work for a post-production company or a gaming company, um, but it's not based on what they spend in the state, it's based on the on the new tax taxes generated by the business. So um, that would mean a gaming company would have to hire a significant amount of people to uh, to get a you know to get a good um, amount uh, on uh, back on that on that incentive, and that's why it hasn't been really taken advantage of because, it, you know, uh, gaming companies and post production companies need to ramp up quite significantly versus you know hiring uh, 30 people on a crew and getting getting the tax credit towards that. Now I will say you know the caveat that is is if a, a film production comes into Utah they can still uh, tie their post production work to their main project so. Um, um, that will also work as a film incentive when they tie it together. However, if a company comes in just to do proposed production work, that doesn't apply for our, our movie incentive, but it could apply to the uh, to the uh, uh, digital media incentive. But again, it is it has a lot of uh, restrictive value to it. I guess would be a proper term, right? Yeah, and that's something. That's another goal for us for for this year is just to come up with. Um, a plan for you know incentives. Do we offer them for games? What do they look like? Um, how do we you know how do we get that going? That is a, probably a legislative action. So it would take a plan that we would take to the legislator next year. So, but it is on on my to do list with John. 
<laughs> yeah. Virginia, you mentioned that it's a 25% credit that uh, companies receive here. How does that compare on a percentage basis with other states? You mentioned the, the scale of what other states are doing. But how competitive do you have on percentage? The percentage actually is fairly competitive. Most states are between 20 and 35 percent, although those 35ers are under a lot of scrutiny right now. If you do a very basic search on film incentives and go to news, you will quickly be overwhelmed with how much is in the news right now. Louisiana is looking at cutting its program back. Michigan just canceled its program altogether. Um, Florida's program has been, you know, basically cut in half. Massachusetts has just barely squeaked by. So there's a lot of these really big programs that legislators and, and the public are saying, why are we spending $200 million a year to give to Hollywood? You know, and, it, and it is, it's hard to justify when it's at that level. I think our level right now, while I'd like to see it grow, and we are trying to grow it this year, will always be on that sort of sustainable, conservative level, because that is the state that we live in. And that's sort of, a, you know, we have to accept that too. We live in, in Utah. <laughs> Anyone else? So we had kind of a wild and, and crazy legislative session last year. Um, and one of the bills that came forward, not out of our office, but from the industry, was so that our, our statute has two parts of the program, our, our incentive program, a cash program and a credit program. The cash program since 2011 has not been funded, so we really work in this tax credit program. And the tax and the cash program has always had a cap on it that was for $500,000, that was the most that we could give any production. So. It didn't really, um, we didn't need to change that because we didn't have any cash to give. So it was just sort of an old part of the statute, which I figured at some point when we move forward with legislative action that we would clean up, potentially get rid of the cash program because it's not funded, just keep the tax credit program. But there was a bill that was put forward by the industry for to raise that cap from $500,000 to $2.5 million or $2 million. $2 million. Um, I don't think the governor understood what the, it was very, it's very complicated, it's probably complicated for you in the audience if you are not familiar with the incentive program. Um, he, he was a little unsure about what it was for and felt like we should wait until we were ready with a plan and it was part of a bigger proposal and so he vetoed it for that reason. So he did not veto additional funding. He vetoed a clause of an old part of the bill. But it's hard to explain, so it didn't hit the papers that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 